Hello everyone and welcome to round 16 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. As you've seen in my previous video, uh, after three consecutive wins, uh, Fischer again hits a draw uh, against uh, Cuban international master uh, Serguera and now he faces Mongolian international master uh, Tudevin Uitumen, uh, if that's how you pronounce uh, Mongolian names, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, he did uh, in 1965. He did become the first Mongolian international master. Uh, he won the the Mongolian chess championship three times, and he represented Mongolia six times in the chess Olympiad. And uh, and this is one of the tournaments that he is playing excellent chess. As in round one, uh, Wittemann defeated Samuel Reshevsky, and he continued. Uh, uh, his winning streak up until round four. So after after three rounds uh, of the Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament, uh, Uitumen here was the sole leader of the tournament. Now he faces Bobby Fischer, he has the white pieces. And uh, before we check out the game, uh, I did uh, prepare a nice photo challenge for you. Uh, also a nice uh, photo to promote chess, uh, but it, it's more of a movie question, so best of luck to everyone. Uh, who are the two chess players in the photo here? Uh, there you have it. Best of luck to everyone. It's it's an old game, so I don't know how many of you uh, would know this, but uh, you know, if you consider statistics, you know, uh, w uh, what ages watch my channel, uh, pretty sure you will know this one. So best of luck to everyone. Now let's check out the game. Uh, Uitumen has the white pieces and he opens with e4, and Fischer yet again goes for knight to f6. He already won one game with Alejen's defense, so why not try it again? Uh, e5. Uh, you know, everything according uh, to how Aliehin uh, imagined this should be played. Knight to d5, d4, uh, we have d6 attacking the central pawn, uh, c4, knight to b6, and uh, in the previous game, uh, e captures on d6 was played. Here we have f4, and uh, we have the four pawns attack. Uh, Fischer goes for a bishop to f5. Uh, and now knight to c3 by Uitumen. It's uh, worth noticing that uh, g4, you know, you can't go for something like uh, a 5 pawns attack uh, because bishop to e4 will be deadly. Uh, the, your rook on h1 is under attack. Uh, after you defend this with knight to f3, only move, you will get captures. Uh, and now you will either capture with the d-pawn where black will capture the queen and then grab your knight or you will uh, capture with the f-pawn but then simply bishop captures on f3, queen captures and queen captures uh, on d4 and uh, black will have an excellent game here. So after bishop to f5 we have knight to c3 now uh, guarding the e4 square now this is the g4 definitely could be an idea uh, but black immediately plays e6 uh, and prevents any such ideas because now g4 would be met with queen to h4 check and white would of course be lost here. So e6, uh, we have bishop to e3, uh, bishop to e7, preparing the castle, knight to f3, and now castles. Uh, e captures on d6, c captures on d6, and b3 now. A nice solid move, uh, improving white's pawn structure, and Fischer goes d5. Uh, we have c5, advancing the pawn, uh, knight, knight uh, 6 to d7. Uh, bishop to d3, now offering to trade bishops, bishop captures, queen captures, and b6 now. Uh, it would be, I mean, if he could pull something off like f6 and d5, this would be excellent for black. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's not possible uh, because white would go f5 here and after you push and after an exchange is made here, then your d5 pawn is undefended and after uh, all is said and done, you would uh, simply lose a pawn here. Uh, but, you know, white does have a firm grip uh, against d5 square and this should definitely be challenged sometime in the future. Uh, b6. Uh, we have pawn captures on b6, queen captures on b6, and now uh, we have castles by Uitumen, and Fischer goes queen to a6, immediately offering to trade queens. Uh, queen to d1, Uitumen uh, declines the, the queen trade, knight to c6, and now comes knight to e5. Uh, Fischer captures, knight c captures on e5, f captures on e5, and now rook a to c8, uh, attacking Uitumen's knight on, on c3. Uh, rook to c1 defending, uh, and now f6, Fischer finally uh, attacks uh, Uitumen's strong central pawn structure. e captures on f6, knight captures on f6, and h3. Uh, we have bishop to b4, now with a double attack against uh, Uitumen's c3 knight. Uh, knight to a4, uh, offering a rook trade, rook captures, and now bishop captures. Queen captures was also possible, but after queen captures, uh, 
perhaps uh, he, he didn't enjoy rook to c8 uh, and then you you have a lot of things to consider here knight to c5 is definitely an option but then you get bishop captures pawn captures and not even capturing on a2 but rather e5 uh, starting a central pawn storm and also queen captures on a2 remains a threat so this would be very enjoyable for black to play uh, but uh, again after rook to c8 you could consider moving the queen queen d1 and then after something like knight to e4 uh, queen g4 and the queen to d6, but uh, again, black will be solid in, in any of these variations. So after rook to c1, uh, a rather bishop captures on c1 is played. We have knight to e4, offering a trade of rooks, uh, rook captures, bishop captures, and now bishop to f4. Uh, bishop to d6, uh, we have queen to g4, and now bishop captures on f4. Queen captures on f4 and queen to d6. Uh, Fisher uh, offers now a trade of queens. We have queen captures and the knight captures. So we reached uh, this endgame where uh, the material is completely equal uh, to two pawns on the king's side. Uh, the difference is Fisher has an advantage two pawns against one on the uh, uh, in the center of the board, and Wittemann has an advantage two pawns against one uh, on the queen side. So it's pretty much an equal endgame. Let's see how they play it out. Uh, here, knight to c3 was played, which is the, the best move. Uh, you can't go something like king to f2, e3 to protect the d4 pawn, uh, because after king f2, knight to f5 is coming, controlling the e3 square, and you're going to lose uh, the d4 pawn. On the other hand, after knight to d6, if you try something like knight to c5 to attack this pawn, uh, black will simply defend king to f7, and then this knight isn't really doing all that much on c5 you will never be able to attack the a7 pawn uh, it would simply require too many moves so after knight d6 the correct reply knight c3 fisher goes knight f5 attacking the d4 pawn and the knight to e2 uh, the knight from e2 now guards the d4 pawn nicely knight to e3 uh, king to f2 attacking Fisher's knight, knight to c2 now, and now uh, Fisher is uh, controlling the d4 pawn very nicely, uh, not allowing uh, Wittemann's uh, e2 knight to move. King to f3 improving the position of the king, and Fisher does uh, the same, king f6. King f4, we have king to f6, both players simply improve the position of their kings, as that's what you want to do in the endgame. Uh, h4, we have h6, and now h5, not allowing Fisher to push g5. And uh, if there are some real beginners here, uh, some of you sometimes ask me in the comments, uh, after a move like h, uh, after a move like g5 is played here, how can white play h captures on g6 here? Uh, well, this is possible. Something it's a move uh, called en passant. Uh, I believe it's French for uh, gra uh, you know capturing while passing by or something like that. Uh, it, it's uh, when black makes a move uh, from from the. From, pawn, from the pawn's starting square, he moves the pawn two squares, uh, then you are able to capture it uh, either from, for example, here, or for example, if you had a pawn here, you could capture it here. It would be pretty much the same if you played g6 and then the pawn captured it on g6, uh, but it doesn't matter. If you play g5, you can still capture it even uh, you know, as if the pawn was still on g6. The only difference is uh, you can only capture it immediately. If you move the king, uh, you will no longer be able to do this right, uh, you know, the second time uh, because Ampasan is only play capturing a pawn, Ampasan is only playable, uh, you know, now that this move has been played. So, you know, just wanted to share that. So after h5, knight to e1, now Fisher attacks uh, the g2 pawn, g3 is played, and knight back to c2, simply controlling the d4 pawn. Uh, we have king to g4, now comes e5, uh, you know, a nice central central, central thrust. Uh, d captures on e5, king captures on e5, and king to f3 now. And here, Fisher plays knight to, d, uh, knight to b4. Uh, okay, this is the strongest move recommended by the engine, but we should definitely check out why knight to d4 check doesn't work. Uh, knight captures, of course, will be winning for black. Of course, white will not do this. King e3. And now after captures, captures, and king d4, it's, uh, you know, worth exploring why this uh, doesn't work for black. Uh, after king d2, king to e4 is coming, and now white will simply repeat moves. King e2, and it will block the black king from going any further. If black uh, is persistent and keeps on pushing his pawn, then white will simply move the king, d3, and now uh, will start pushing the queen side pawns. Uh, king d4, a4 is coming, king c4. Uh, and now b5 and here you will have to move the king back king d4 and then it's it will once again be a draw if white is persistent uh, here and pushes a5 we will then play king c5 
uh, and uh, draw this game. But it's very interesting if instead of this move you play king to b4, uh, then black is lost here. Uh, why, why black is lost is because after king captures on d3, king captures on a4 and king c4, you are protecting this pawn and after king a5, king c5, black is now, uh, you know, uh, is without a move, uh, you have to move, black is in Tsugzwang, and uh, there is nothing you, you can do here. Whatever move you make, you will ruin your position. Uh, b6 is coming, and after captures, captures, uh, white is simply much faster here, uh, as you can see. After the kings approach the pawns, captures, 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 and then white will be able uh, to push his h-pawn all the way to, to promotion. So uh, a very nice sideline, but it shows why knight to d4 check doesn't really do all that much for black. So instead, Fisher goes knight to b4, attacks the a2 pawn. Uh, we have uh, knight to c1, defending the pawn, and now king to d4. Uh, we have g4 here and a5 by Fisher. Uh, and here Uitman plays knight to e2 check, uh, which is the strongest move. Uh, as you can see, the king is controlling the e3 square, the knight is controlling the c3 square. So here uh, there's the, the question whether Fisher wants to go back with king to e5 or go king to d3. So before we go back, we should of course check if we can go forward. So if king to d3, uh, then comes a3, attacking the knight. You have to move the knight and now comes knight to f4 check. Uh, uh, with with a nice attack against the, the d5 pawn. Uh, after king to c2, uh, then comes b4. Uh, white wants to give up both of the pawns on the on the queen side to grab the d5 pawn. Uh, so here, after pawn captures, 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 and knight goes to e6, attacking the g7 pawn. Uh, you will see that white is in time uh, to to stop the passed d pawn, and uh, everything will be in order. For example, king c3, uh, preparing to push the d-pawn, but simply knight captures, pawn moves, knight here, uh, pawn moves, uh, we have g5, h captures, and now h6. Uh, Uitman will also have a nice pass pawn, uh, d2, and after knight to e3, controlling the queening square, uh, this would end up being a draw. So after knight d3, uh, h7, now comes knight check, king moves, and knight to f7. Uh, again controlling the queening square, so now that both players are controlling the queening square, uh, knight to f1 will simply win this pawn and uh, it, it will be a draw. So after this knight to e2 check, uh, Fisher decided, okay, king d3 isn't worth it, I'll go back, king to e5, and here uh, Uitman simply repeated move or the move king to c, uh, knight to c1, and Fisher did not feel that he could push for any advantage here, uh, and, uh, you know, as well, uh, th there is no way to push for any advantage here. If you move the king, he will simply continue checking him. And it's okay, I mean, it's uh, equal material, a draw, not, not a bad result here. So yeah, after three consecutive wins, uh, Fisher uh, draws around 15 and 16. And uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but, uh, you know, here comes uh, uh, something that's called Fisher's legendary streak after this game. Uh, but we'll talk about that more after in, in some of my uh, next videos. So yeah, uh, that was round 16 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the Bobby Fisher series so far. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, probably ch I'll check a couple of your uh, suggestions that, as I've seen you've been suggesting games uh, a lot uh, but uh, mostly uh, continuing with the Bobby Fisher series. Thank you all and I'll see you soon.